Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silek, and we've got an exciting show in store for you this week. We're gonna introduce you to a Michigan bow hunter who recently tagged a record book buck. He also managed to capture his hunt on camera, so Jordan sat down with him to hear the story of that exciting hunt. You won't wanna miss that. And Jimmy's got another adventure in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have another adventure on this week's show. Just this past week, I was able to get out with a good friend of mine who is a tournament bass fisherman, and he really give you a masterclass in bass fishing, specifically how to target them in the fall. You won't want to miss that story. We're also going to have a really good venison recipe on this week's show for those of you that are starting to put some back straps in the freezer. Lots of good stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies, it's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. We kick off this week's show in southern Michigan where I was able to catch up with one lucky hunter who put a tag on a beautiful Michigan buck and was able to capture the entire hunt on camera. The story really starts. Um, I don't. I couldn't put any. Uh, I couldn't piece it together from last year at all. Um, any bucks from last year, but when he showed up, the very first picture I got of him, you know, he just looked like a mid 160 class deer. You know, the the camera is you know a little lower to the ground and it's kind of pointed up, and it just gives him that that really good look. And he looked like a giant. And um, I, you know, I kept getting trail cam pictures of him and we were getting to that point in the summer where I took that camera out of there because every buck that walked by there would would give it the the stink eye if you will and uh, you know so I took that camera out of there and put one close to it a cell cam and uh, put it up in a tree on more of a down angle so you know they wouldn't notice it as much and uh, you know so those pictures don't make him look as big and uh, you start second guessing it but I knew he was you know probably 150 inch deer and he was you know still showing up. of the three shooters I've got on camera was just on the lane over here behind me this morning coming back in here somewhere. I haven't had pictures of him on this food plot but I know he's close. He's got to be really close so it was it was during daylight at like eight o'clock so I'm sure he got in here and didn't bed too far away so just really 
just hoping to lay some eyes on him. I forgot my binoculars, so I'll have to rely on the camera to really get a good judge of him, but I think he's a 150 inch deer. Hopefully we see him tonight. I got in, I got in just a little later than I wanted to. I got to the tree at about five and um, when I climbed up, there was already a couple, a couple of yearlings and a, and a mom in the field, in, in the food plot, and uh, so I had to go really slow, and by the time I got set up, a couple other deer had filtered in, and um, so it was kind of nice, you know, you sit down and you're already seeing deer, there wasn't much of a waiting time, but uh, yeah, a couple other small bucks filtered out, and um, I probably had like 12 deer in the food plot, and uh, they were, they kind of worked across in front of me, and I'm um, into this little uh, buffer patch of weeds. Um, I happened to look down, like right down the edge of the food plot, and I saw a buck there. And at first I didn't notice that it was him, and I kind of looked back to the two-year-old and I thought, wait a second, that was a pretty nice buck. And I turned back and looked, and I forgot my binoculars, of course, and I was looking, I was like, that's, that's a nice one. So I get the camera over there, and I realized that it was him. And at that point, you know, the heart just really starts pounding. And it's like, okay, you know, calm down. He's 100 yards away still. And, you know, at first I reached for my bow, and I was like, you need to put that back down because this isn't going to happen for a while. So I put the bow back up. He took his time. You know, it was probably 15, 20 minutes from the time I saw him. You know, he was just feeding in that food plot and just slowly, slowly working his way, you know. It's hard to imagine what it would be like watching a buck of this caliber for 15 or 20 minutes. But after a while, the buck finally worked his way within bow range, and Shane was ready to take the shot. He was 30 yards right on that licking branch, and... Um, I go to pull back and there's a limb that comes off above my head and I pulled back and my elbow hit it and so I had to kind of tuck it under. Um, and so it was a little bit uncomfortable but I settled down and I mean he wasn't going anywhere so I knew just like take your time, you know, feel the trigger and follow through. far forward. Oh, oh my lord. God, that was a lot of crashing and thrashing right there. Holy smokes. I gotta sit down. Oh, I cannot believe that just happened. Oh, I hope I got enough penetration. If I got enough penetration, he's dead. You know, not seeing him go down, like not knowing for sure that he went down. Um, when I was walking through there, there's really only one trail on the top of that gravel pit. And um, I'm walking down it and not seeing any blood. And I figured that'd be the trail that he was on. And when I looked up and he was 20 yards away and you could see his white belly and just the rack sticking off the ground. I mean, it was pretty, uh, you know, indescribable. I mean, there's just really, you know, especially trying to describe something like that to someone who's never experienced, you know, deer hunting. You just really can't even portray the emotion that you go through and just, it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Congrats to Shane on a beautiful Michigan buck. And thanks for sharing the footage with all of us. The next few weeks will provide some of the best bow hunting of the entire year. Good luck to hunters hitting the woods around the state. What a great deer, what a great hunt. Thanks so much for sharing that story with us. What we're doing now is shift gears to the world of fishing, specifically fall bass fishing, and how you target a lake this time of the year. So 
you know, this time of year, obviously we're in fall. The first thing that I'm gonna do, uh, and I haven't been to this lake in a while, is see what the water temperature is, right? So when you come out in the fall time, that's the very first thing you wanna do is see, you know, how cold has the water gotten? Um, you know, obviously um, it starts off in our summertime in the 70s, drops all the way down into the 30s, and then we got ice, right? So right now we're looking at about 50 degree water. Um, you know, we're following up after several really cold days lately, which I'm sure dropped that water temperature down. It had been around in the mid 50s. Uh, 50 degree water temperature is still fantastic fishing. Um, and really the water in, in Michigan, um, the fishing stays good up until you have ice, honestly. It's just how you fish and where you fish, right? So, you know, this time of year with 50 degree water, the fish should be, you know, kind of where they have been in the summer for the most part, but starting to kind of transition in the 50 degrees, they're feeding up heavy, right? They're getting ready for winter. They know something's coming. So they're starting to really eat a lot. Um, on the lake we're on today, it's primarily a panfish lake. So lots of bluegills, perch, crappie. Uh, that's what the bass are gonna be feeding on. So we're gonna be looking for, you know, those schools of bluegill and crappie and perch. And when you find the bait, you're gonna find the bass. So right here, um, we've all heard of a jigging pig, right? Um, you know, like a bass casting jig. This is actually what you would call a swim jig. All right, so uh, basically a um, little bit different head design than a normal jig. Things are much more streamlined. All right, so it's designed to kind of swim through that water column. Uh, the brush guard on it is a lot looser, or a lot thinner than most you know, jigs are. A little bit thinner wire hook than most jigs. And then we put a swim bait on the back of it. Um, and that swim bait, when we're down there, that jig's basically just going to kind of slowly swim along, you know, close to the bottom. Um, and what that's emulating, obviously we were talking about that earlier, but this is going to emulate the bluegills and stuff like that. Bluegill perch, you know, that are going to be swimming around down there. So it's, you know, basically we're matching the hatch, right? You know, just a real subtle bait, you know, that you can kind of swim through that area. Hopefully they'll bite it. We'll find out. Ben has been tournament bass fishing for over 30 years now, and it's kind of fun when they have to work a little bit to find some fish. On to the second spot. First spot, no good. No good. There were a few fish there, but they didn't want to bite very well. So now we're just kind of cruising through the second area here on my screen right now. You know, looks like there's definitely some activity down there. Those brighter spots are going to be like, that's probably a school of bluegill right there. Um, and then it kind of curves back here a little bit. There's definitely some fish on here. We're looking for those brighter white spots. You know, those, those are black generally dots. fish. Uh, that's a shadow. Those are rocks, okay. Yep, yep. So as we're going along, we're just kind of looking to see. There's some fish that were under the boat right there. The current electronics, well, they have changed fishing. With side imaging and live imaging, you can find fish and then cast to them, but that doesn't always equate to easy fishing. So what I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm checking different areas, I'm checking different baits that I'm throwing, um, and trying to figure out, you know, how far along are these fish in their progression towards, you know, what we would call, you know, a wintertime spot or a spot that they're going to hang out in the wintertime. Um, and, you know, so I'll go through a different series of baits in different areas just to kind of try to determine, you know, where are these fish right now? Are they you know, halfway to their winter stage? Are they at their winter stage? Um, you know, are they, you know, in more of a regular fall pattern, early fall pattern? You know, and so I haven't been on the lake, haven't been here in a long time. And, you know, we're just kind of trying to, you know, figure these fish out and kind of see where everything's at right now. All right. So that's the Carolina rig. It's, um, you know, a little bit different way to go after them. So basically you've got, you know, a pretty heavy weight. This is a three quarter ounce tungsten, a couple of glass beads, this little rubber bead is a stopper and the reason that you put that on there is so that as this thing's flying around when you're casting it's not going to actually get too abrasive on your fishing knot right there so it kind of protects that knot right there from breaking then you have a barrel swivel after that and then you'll have a leader okay and it can vary on length today we're running you know about, i don't know about a two foot leader all right down to this end which is our bait and this happens to be a, a baby brush hog is what they call that all right and it's texas rig so when the whole rig is kind of down there on the bottom you know it kind of looks like this and this is the part that's dragging around on the bottom and then your leader and your bait are kind of floating up behind it mm. all right so this is kind of a subtle bait that's kind of floating up around you know for those fish to eat well this is down here kind of rummaging around in the rocks and when it does that the weight will kind of slide around in these little beads will kind of clack and make noise 
all right? And that kind of draws fish in. So the theory is this draws them in, and then once this draws them in, they see this tasty little morsel floating around behind them, and then that's what they eat right there. So it's called a Carolina rig. Let's see if we can get this one in the boat, Jimmy. Doesn't feel like he's real big, but he's definitely pulling hard. He's gonna take me over to the other side. Nice little large mouth. Let's see if we can flip him in the boat. Nice. Nice fish, right? Just kind of a your classic healthy Michigan keeper largemouth. Uh, you know? And that was what bait we throw in there. So this is what they call a blade bait or silver buddy. You'll hear them called a lot of times. Um, and it's really, in essence, it's a chunk of metal. Okay. Uh, I'm not, you know, seems kind of weird. But uh, when that water starts to cool off, that bite really will start turning on. Um, and they'll eat that silver buddy pretty good. So, um, yeah, just a nice, chunky, beautiful Michigan largemouth. I, this is my swim jig slash uh, bladed jig box, right? So a lot of these are swim jigs, you know, like what we've been throwing. We're about ready to switch to a different color. Um, you know, this has been another really good color. Kind of looks like a bluegill, you know, both of those. If we get into some really darker water, then we'll bring out, you know, kind of your classic black and blue. So you want to go darker when the water's dark? Yep, darker, darker color. Yep, you, when you're fishing deeper water, for sure. Okay. Yep. Um, you know, the dark silhouettes better, you know, when that water's darker. So early morning, a lot of times you'll throw a darker bait. Like it's common that you'll throw black and blue to start the day and you may end up switching to a green pumpkin. And by later in the day, if it's sunny, you may be throwing a bait like this. So you've got, you know, different shades all the way down through. Pretty, pretty close though. Pretty close. Yep. Uh, but believe it or not, I mean, there are days where that little bit of difference gets them to trigger and eat. We were just saying, sometimes you'll make a color switch, you know, and that's all that it'll take. So, you know, we've literally thrown to that same spot four or five times with a different colored bait. And I literally tied this bait on, which is just a little bit darker shade, and my first cast caught one. Hmm. So, sometimes just switching that up is a good idea. I mean, we've all got baits that we really like, you know, that are really good baits, but if they're not biting it and you know that there's fish around, you need to start experimenting with different colors, different presentations until you can get those fish to react. Now, obviously that's not a real giant fish, but who cares? <laughs> they're all fun to catch, right? So, you know, we don't have to catch the biggest ones in the world, but yeah, another really good, solid, nice. classic fish. Well, Ben was starting to get the feel for what might be working today, and we started to find a few more bites along the way. All right, here we go. First cast at this new spot. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Nice one, right? Hey. Wait, look at how blonde they are. Aren't they? Once again, you know, it's as I was saying, it's from that muddier water like that. They just have that really light appearance to them. It's really pretty. Yeah. Cool, what'd you catch him on? This was on a swim jig. So, you know, we've been going around uh, and, you know, today's been tough. There's no doubt. It hasn't been just come out on the lake and catch a bunch of fish. You know, we've had to work for it. And, you know, what we're doing is we're kind of, you know, keeping our head on straight. We're bouncing between fishing some shallow stuff, fishing some offshore stuff, driving around, marking things. We just pulled up to a new spot offshore. And uh, obviously we saw fish on the screen and sure enough, they're deciding to bite. Hopefully things are heating up a little bit. Well, things were starting to heat up just a little bit. We were working for them, but give a good angler some time and, well, some guys just always seem to find some fish. Nice Another fish. fish on the swim jig. Cool looking fish, kind of skinny, but I see why he was hungry, Jimmy. <laughs> nice. What did we catch that one on? Let's see that one. That again. one's on a swim jig. So a little okay. while back we made a change to a little darker color and definitely seems to be getting a little bit more bites, no doubt about that. We did find some fish, but we also found a few things that, well, Ben had never caught before. Would be your typical <laughs> kid's water shoe. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna catch. I don't even really wanna touch this, to be honest with you.
I guess this is what happens when you go fishing after summer, right? You catch everybody's shoes that they lost throughout the whole summer. Have you ever caught a shoe before? And I've never caught a shoe before. In 20 in, years of fishing? In the same spot, I have now caught two shoes. The bite is hot today, Jimmy. <laughs> Getting a master class in fishing, especially fall bass fishing, was a lot of fun today. The weather was perfect, the fishing was tough, but Ben got it done. And Ben has literally fished over 600 bass fishing tournaments and still loves it. And I was curious as we left the lake, I asked Ben if he can remember the very first fish he ever caught here in Michigan's Out of Doors. On vacation in northern Michigan, fishing with my dad. Um, and you know, I can still remember that fish to this day. Um, and I would say, you know, pardon the pun, but I was hooked. Uh, you know, as soon as I saw that, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I've been chasing those little buggers ever since. Well, here we are in Mount Pleasant again, right next to CMU's campus. We're here with Jim Wood at the Wood Shop Social, and I see venison backstrap. Yep. <laughs> this is the time of year where people are putting them in the freezers. There's a lot of ways to cook them. What are we gonna do today? So we're gonna do a black pepper crust, and Ooh. we're gonna make a herb hollandaise for it. And that's not too hard to do? No, it's super simple, actually. All right, we'll get it started. What are, how are you gonna sear that off there? Well, we're gonna get our pan rolling here. And people have asked, this is just a little butane. Yeah, or, yeah. Okay. You can order these online. You can get them at the. I mean, if you live in a city that has a GFS marketplace, they have them there. Okay. Um, and most people know this, but I think just to you always want to kind of cook your venison to about medium rare kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, or, or rare. Well, there's just no intramuscular fat with venison, mm. with wild venison. So, yeah, keep it as whatever you can stomach. Okay. I mean, I'll eat it on rare, medium rare, never anything over medium rare yeah. with, with venison loin or. It changes it quite a bit. It does. We're gonna get some pepper on the other side. Hit it with some more salt. This is actually probably the longest part of this dish. So now we're gonna make the hollandaise while this is going. Okay. The easiest way to make hollandaise at home is a blender. Okay. Um, traditionally, they'd make this uh, over simmering water with a pan. You whisk it, and it's kind of a nightmare. We don't have time for that. No, nobody wants to do that. I don't even want to do that. <laughs> and that's the way you're supposed to do it. So right here, we've got three egg yolks. We're going to start out with a little bit of lemon juice, because you can always add, but you can't ever take away. Okay. We've got some smoked paprika here. Hmm. Little bit of Dijon, just a touch. Hmm. And now we're going to blend this real quickly. So not, not, not a lot in there. Nope. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we'll drizzle our melted butter in here. And that for the most part is done. So now we're just waiting on the venison. Add some herbs to our hollandaise here. And what is that? We've got basil and fresh basil and fresh rosemary. Mm -hmm. A lot more basil than rosemary. Man. Okay. And once this venison is cooked about two thirds of the way up, which it has, we're gonna give it a flip. And that's the crust that I was talking about there. And you have that on what, about a medium to medium high heat kind of a thing? Actually this is, so these butane burners are a little different. Okay. Uh, it's pretty much always on high. Oh it is, okay. So you try to get it as low as you possibly can. All right, so now that this is basically done, okay. right at the end we put a big lob of butter in. Ooh. Sorry if I got you. That's all right. And we're just gonna take, turn it off the heat, and we're just gonna coat that butter over the top. <laughs> wow. Name of this dish is pepper encrusted seared venison loin with herb hollandaise.
Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks here this fall. We've got a lot more excitement headed your way. We'll take you out on a Saginaw Bay duck hunt. We'll do a little bit more bow hunting and some fall walleye fishing. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Lots of places you can be checking us out and make sure that you are getting out and enjoying this time of the year here in our great state. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO, the number two, Alta. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jace has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love